In this video, I'll be demonstrating the service chaining capabilities of Viptela. Attach is the topology we will be working on. We have three branches and a hub. We also have a firewall connected at the hub. By default, the traffic between branch 1 and branch 2 flows directly through the available paths that is the MPLS as well as internet. Now we will create a service chain policy and force the traffic between branch 1 and branch 2 to go through the firewall connected at the hub. So let's first go to the network and check what's the, check the existing traffic flows between branch 1 and branch 2. Let's put the destination IP of branch 2. And there you can see that the traffic directly flows from branch 1 to branch 2. So let's go ahead and do a similar check for traffic between branch 2 to branch 1. So let's go to branch 2. Triple shooting for the trace route and put the destination IP of branch 1 subnet. And there you can see that the traffic again flows directly between the two branches. Let's go ahead and take have a look at the routes as well. On branch 1, if you take a look, the destination of branch 2 is available from 4.4.4.102, which is the system IP of branch 2. Similarly, let's check on branch 2. And you will find that uh, the branch 1 destinations are available from 4.4.101, that is from branch 1 T lock or the system IP. So let's go and define a policy. The first thing that we need to do is to go to the hub router and create our services. So these are the two interfaces that are actually connecting to the firewall. One is the interface going in, another one going out. So let's go ahead and create our services. Let's go to our VPN. And let's create our first service. This let's call it net svc1 and the address. 192.169.15.10 Now create another net service service 2 for the written traffic as well. Let's go ahead and hit commit. So just looking at the topology here Uh, so 15.10 and 16.10 are the two interfaces of the firewall. So let's go ahead and now build our policies. Let's go ahead and add our policy. So we don't need to define any groups of interest. So we'll hit next. And here we'll go and do a custom route policy. So we'll using a control policy to uh, steer the traffic towards the hub and the firewall. Let's call it a firewall chain. Let's add the first sequence and as a route policy, let's add our first rule. And in this rule, I'm going to match the site ID of branch 2. So this is with respect to branch 1. So I'm going to put the branch ID 2 and go to action, accept, and then say service. And in that service, I'm going to call my net service 1, which I created on the service VPN of 10. Let's go ahead and save. Now if you just expand the policy, you can see that it's matching on A302 and putting the service. So similarly, let's add for the return traffic. So let's match on site ID 301 and then go to actions, accept and call our service, which is the net service 2 on it SVC 2. Service VPN of 10. Let's save. Now you have both the conditions. Now let's go to the default conditions and just make it accept. That's it. And we can go ahead and hit save policy. Okay. So that's our complete policy. So let's go ahead and next. So we don't want to uh, do any app routing. We want to send all our traffic uh, between branch and branch to the firewall. So we'll just hit next. And here, uh, the assembly of policy, we'll call it service chain. We're going to add our site list. 
and we'll add it to the outbound site list. We'll add both of our sites and hit add. Let's uh, preview our policy as well. So let's click preview and this is the policy that will get pushed to the vSmart once we activate the policy. So let's go back and hit save. That's it and that's our policy. Now let's go ahead and activate our policy. Let's wait for the policy gets activated. And now it's successful. So let's first go and uh, check our simulations as well. So let's go back to network and see how the traffic flows from branch one to branch two. So let's go to branch one, go to troubleshooting, trace routes, and put the destination IP of branch two. And now you can see that the traffic actually flows through the firewall, which is the 15.1.10 and 16.1. It's actually going to the firewall and coming back from the firewall. So similarly, let's see from branch two to branch one so that there is symmetry between the traffic flows. So let's go to trace route and put our destination IP of branch one. And here you can again see that the reverse traffic is also flowing through the firewall and then coming back to branch one. Let's also quickly check our routes. Uh, so uh, before that, uh, we can check that the original uh, destination, original uh, next stop for the destination was 102, and now it should be uh, 404.200, which is the system IP address for the hub. Now similarly, let's go back and check on our branch two router as well. Now earlier it was 404.101. And now if you check, it should be for it for the 200. One thing to note with this policy is that though the traffic path between branch one and branch two is via the hub firewall, the IPsec tunnels are directly established between the branches. We can tune the policies further to ensure IPsec is also terminated at the hub and not directly if that is a requirement. Thus, you can see how simple it is to create service chaining policies with Piptela and steer traffic across the desired paths. That's it for the demo and thanks for watching.